CEO Ripple XRP leaked, trial will end in January 2023. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse told an audience at the DC Fintech Week conference that the SEC case against his company will be resolved in the first half of 2023. The current price of XRP for today is 0. 0.35 US dollars, and the trading volume for 24 hours is 1360000000 US dollars. We are updating our XRP price in US dollars in real time. XRP has dropped 30% in the last 24 hours. Welcome to the Rich Club channel. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. The Relative Strength Index, RSI, has not been definitive over the past few days. Last week, the RSI held a neutral value of 50 as support, but recently this level has not passed. Thus, there may be some volatile dynamics during the weekend. Similarly, the awesome oscillator, AO, was also below zero. He has not yet shown a strong bearish impulse. The A-D line had a resistance zone that was directly overhead and was indicated by two dotted white lines. If A-D can overcome this region, it will be a sign of sustained demand for the XRP rally. The Directional Movement Index, DMI, showed the absence of a strong trend. ADX, yellow, it was at level 20, ADI just above the 20 mark. Technically, this indicated a bearish trend, but in general meant the absence of a significant trend over the past few days. The $0. 35 dash dollar zero. 36 range will be important to protect the bulls over the next day or two. The formation of a lower low below this area will signal bearish strength. Momentum indicators were inconclusive on the lower timeframes. Bitcoin could also strongly influence the direction of XRP in the near future. According to optimistic forecasts, the lawsuit will be resolved within the next three to four months, Garlinghouse says. However, he does not rule out that it may take longer. Ripple may consider settlement with SEC. Garlinghouse also said that Ripple may consider settling with the SEC, but stressed that XRP should not be recognized as a security. However, since the SEC boss views the vast majority of cryptocurrencies as securities, this creates a mystery about how to settle it all. Consequences for the claim Garlinghouse recalled how many industry representatives scoffed at Ripple's warning about the significant consequences of the lawsuit for the entire crypto sector. However, he claims that this is no longer the case. Today, I think everyone recognizes how important this is for the US and the US leadership in the field of cryptocurrencies. This is obviously a court case, the leader, he added. Both Ripple and the SEC filed motions for summary judgment in September. We think the law is very clear, Garlinghouse said. Hinman S. Speech the CEO of Ripple said that the court ordered the SEC to hand over documents related to the infamous Ethereum speech by former high-ranking official William Hinman. He stressed that the regulatory body was asked to transfer them six times. What is it about these notes that they try so hard not to share with the world? Asked Garlinghouse. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has filed several lawsuits against various firms and individuals for violating securities laws. In addition, Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, made various statements about the regulation of cryptocurrencies. Attorney John Deaton has repeatedly accused Gensler of his loose interpretation of the Securities Act. In an interview with CNBC, Becky Quick mentioned that the chairman of the CFTC said they should regulate some cryptocurrency-related assets along with the SEC. She added that the Securities and Exchange Commission has developed some precedents and cited several examples of people agreeing to settle a dispute with the agency. She added that these steps confirm that the SEC should have more control over the industry. To this, the SEC chairman replied that everything is clear in the law. He claims that based on the facts and circumstances, most tokens are securities. At the same time, he added that when a group of entrepreneurs collects money from the population and they all expect to profit from it, they need to disclose it. However, John Deaton, a lawyer who has amicus curiae, friend of the court, status in the XRP lawsuit, expressed concern about this statement. He said the SEC chairman is wrong about this. Gensler ignores two basic requirements stipulated by the law. Firstly, it ignores the general requirements for a common enterprise. Secondly, the SEC chairman ignores the non-investment use of tokens. If it is not acquired for investment, it is not a security. He added that the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission is literally poisoning the public with cryptocurrency. Earlier, Deaton's lawyer commented on the SEC chairman's new interpretation of cryptocurrency regulation in the Kim Kardashian case. As a result, the American celebrity paid about $1.26 million in fines to settle the case. The lawyer added that the commission no longer speaks of cryptocurrency as digital securities. This term was used in the Ripple and LBRY case. 
Now the SEC chairman calls them crypto securities. The Federal Reserve System will continue to tighten monetary policy in an attempt to tame inflation, Central Bank Vice Chairman Lael Brainerd told the participants of the annual economic meeting. The strength of U.S. dollar inflation is due to the shocks caused by the global pandemic, limited supply chains due to the conflict in Ukraine and high economic uncertainty, Brainerd said in her speech at the 64th annual meeting of the National Association of Business Economics in Chicago. According to her, the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the high secondary effects of interest rates, as well as for the strength of the dollar and foreign economic demand. According to Brainerd, the cross-border effects of unforeseen changes in interest rates and exchange rates may reinforce lower risk tolerance, given the fragile liquidity in major financial markets. This could create problems for politicians if these risks materialize. Monetary policy will be restrictive for some time, Brainerd said, adding that a cumulative effort will be needed to reduce the inflation rate. Despite the fact that, thanks to higher interest rates, supply is better aligned with demand, real gross domestic product GDP, decreased by almost 1% year-on-year, and real private domestic purchases also decreased from 6.4% year-on-year last year to just 1.3% this year, Brainerd said. According to her, the decline in consumer spending may be the result of a decline in household savings, which are estimated to be almost 25% less than in previous quarters. It is also predicted that by the end of the year, the policy rate will increase more than twice compared to expectations seven months before. This, taking into account the increase in interest rates and broader financial conditions, means a limited recovery in the second half of the year with relatively stable GDP growth. There are some good expectations. Brainerd pointed out that strong wage growth and high rental and housing costs are expected to reduce high inflation. It is also expected that due to the shift in demand from goods to services, the decline in basic import prices and disordered supply chains, basic goods will return to some semblance of prices before the pandemic. The pandemic has led to increased margins in the trading sectors, which are expected to be balanced by increasing inventories, easing supply constraints and reducing demand, which Brainerd says will help lower commodity inflation. According to Brainerd, against the background of different views on future inflation, a quarter of respondents expect prices to be at or below the current level in the next 5 to 10 years. In addition, preliminary signs of labor market rebalancing come from unconfirmed reports suggesting that the labor market is weakening, Brainerd said. In a recent tweet, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, expressed his outrage at the growing number of fraudulent bots on the popular platform. In addition, he can't believe that he still needs to report his copycats to the Twitter support service. He added that there are many verified fraudulent accounts on Twitter. These fraudulent accounts use the name of Garlinghouse, Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum, and Changpeng Zhao, CEO of Binance, to write fraudulent cryptocurrency tweets. The CEO of Ripple is still waiting for some action, while a huge number of fraudulent accounts are using the platform. He also shared the email he received from Twitter. It mentions that a registered account does not indicate a violation of their identification policy. These fraudulent crypto accounts and Twitter bot responses have been noted by some crypt analysts and experts. These accounts posed as Binance CEOs and sent spam on Twitter. While Garlinghouse's image and name are used to distribute fake XRP tokens, Twitter, the social media giant, is embroiled in a lawsuit against Elon Musk over the rejection of a $44 billion acquisition deal. The richest man in the world claims that the social network provided inaccurate data on Twitter bots. It mentions that there are many more fake accounts running on the platform than the company estimates. What do you think are the prospects for XRP in 2023? Write your forecasts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video to the end, please do not forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the release of new videos and do not forget about our contest, write in the XRP comments to add 500 XRP to your account.